Hello, students. Can you hear me? Audible. Okay. So today we are going to start a new chapter. We have finished a uh, ionic glass class, right? yeah so today we are going to start a new chapter of organic chemistry and that is isomerism all of you write down the heading isomerism little bit we have discussed about it in kbpy class yes or no just 2 minutes okay so what is isomerism see first of all isomerism is a phenomenon basically right so it is a phenomenon in which a given molecule exists in different different forms in which they have different structural formula and they have different physical and chemical properties so it is the write down heading first of all i'll take one example and make you understand it is the phenomenon in which phenomenon in which a molecule exist in different structural formula structural formula and and they have different physical or or chemical properties this phenomenon is isomerism okay and the molecule which exist in different different forms are called isomers okay so for example you see we have a molecule of formula say c3 or c2h6o this is the molecular formula if i ask you to draw the structure of this okay two possible formula of this you can write one is ch3 o ch3 which is obviously an ether another one is ch3 
CH two OH. Okay. So one is ether, other one is alcohol. So obviously, we see ether and alcohol have different properties, right? They have different uh, chemical properties, right? We know this alcohol is polar protic solvent. This one is polar aprotic solvent. We have oxygen hydrogen bond. There is an acidic hydrogen present in alcohol, but we don't. We do not have such hydrogen present in ether. So obviously they have different properties. Obviously their melting and boiling point will also be different, right? This phenomenon is isomerism, right? This phenomenon is isomerism. And what are these two called? These two are these two are called isomers of each other. Remember, isomers we always define in a pair, right? These are the isomers of each other. So this is what we are going to um, understand. Okay, one more information I want to know. Have we finished uh, this one? Um, P block. Group thirteen and group fourteen. No, so like thirteen and fourteen we haven't done. Uh, okay, so what I want you to do, you can start NCERT on your own. Thirteen and fourteen, there are things to mug up. Okay, uh, nothing much to understand there in that particular chapter. So I'll take up one class to finish these two, thirteen and fourteen. Okay, so we'll do that in the last. Obviously, we have to do this chapter and then hydrocarbon, and then in the last one class we'll have for, uh, you know, this thing, um, group thirteen and fourteen. Today is eleventh, and then eighteenth we have one class. Twenty fifth, we have another class, right? What or which chapter? Uh, it will take two class, I guess. Okay. A school portion, though we can finish short today itself, but for competitive exam, it will take two class at least. Okay, so we have four classes till now. Uh, Feb seventh, you are you are going to have the full, uh, you know, eleventh portion, full eleventh syllabus uh, test, came on test. Okay, so before that, we are planning to wrap up everything, right? So four to five class max to max we'll have. Okay, so we'll take two class for this, two class for hydrocarbon, and then uh, one class for PN. Uh, p block that we have two groups right so you just go through once mens mens will you'll get you'll you'll know about it you'll get the information okay i don't know uh, you know the in, uh, the exact information yet it is not disclosed but yes i guess it is j mens neat ct and advance all four type okay so Isomerism—the definition you understood, correct? Now, what is the classification of isomerism? What are the different different types of isomerism we have? Isomerism—you see—it is classified into two categories. First, Into two categories, one is structural and other one is a stereoisomerism. Or structural or constitutional isomerism, both are same thing. Constitutional isomerism, and other one is. stereo isomerism okay further 
Is structural isomerism also classified? The first one in this we have chain or nuclear isomerism. Second one we have positional isomerism. Positional isomerism. Third one, we have functional isomerism. Fourth one, we have metamerism. Ring chain isomerism. And the last one, we have totemerism. Okay. Stereo isomerism further classified into two categories. Classified into two categories, configurational and conformational. Configurational isomerism, again further classified into two categories. That is geometrical and optical. This is the classification we have for isomerism. Copy down this. Okay, done. Yeah, guys, finished. Okay, now for your school exam, only structural, uh, they'll ask, okay. If you look at the entire portion, the chapter is quite big. Okay, we have configurational, these two are very important for competitive exam. Conformational is also important, right? So all these things are important. But in the school exam, they'll, uh, they'll give you this, and to some extent, geometrical isomerism. Optical isomerism, they'll teach you hardly 10 to 15 minutes, more, not more than that. Have you done this chapter in school? Yes. Tell me. Achha, not a separate chapter. Okay. It's a separate chapter actually, not in hydrocarbons. So that's how, you know, they don't, they also do not have that much time. So they'll manage something. So what I'll do here, no, just I'm one, I wanted to know, they have done optical in detail, like they have done optical in school? No, they haven't done. So that's what the thing is, they won't ask you this in the exam. So one thing, one more thing we can do, we can start with this structural today. Okay, we'll finish whatever we can do. This is not that big. We we'll finish whatever we can do. Achha, they haven't mentioned structural.
Okay, we'll see. I, I'm not getting. Anyways, let it be. We'll discuss it first. We'll see that in the last. Let it be. Okay. So what I'm telling you for comparative point of view, all these things are very important. Okay. So we are starting with structural isomerism today. Okay. Heading right down structural isomerism. What is a structural isomerism? It is a form of isomerism a form of isomerism in which isomers in which isomers have difference only in their only in their atomic arrangements only in their atomic arrangements in the molecule molecular formula must be same that is the necess necessary condition we have okay so basically same molecular formula but different structural formula same molecular formula but different structural formula okay this is a structural isomerism different different types we have the first type write down is chain isomerism okay so you see same molecular molecular formula is therefore there there for all kind of isomerism we have under this so this condition we have everywhere okay with this what is the other condition we have which defines chain isomerism okay So write down it is due to due to the difference in in the arrangement of of carbon atoms constituting the chain constituting the chain okay for example you see what is the name of this compound ch3 ch2 CH two CH three. It is N butane. Another one you see, CH three CH, CH three CH three. So this one is N butane, normal butane, and this one is. Two methyl propane, the IUPAC name. If you see, isn't it? If you look at the molecular formula, 
both are same only but the number of carbon atom in the chain is different you see the parent chain is this one here which contains three carbon atom but here we have four carbon atom so chain isomers we define only when the number of carbon atom in the parent chain is different with same molecular formula keep that in mind okay the parent chain should be different in the two molecules which has the same molecular formula then it is chain isomerism okay now you see this example here ch3 ch2 ch2 ch3 ch2 ch3 i request all of you to write down a bit faster ch3 ch ch2 ch3 and here we have ch3 one more we have ch3 c ch3 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 all these are chain isomers if you look at the name it is n pentane this one is 2 methyl butane you can check the molecular formula is same and this one is 2 comma 2 dimethyl propane they all have same molecular formula okay the second molecule we also call it as isopentane when we have at second last carbon any methyl group is present then it is iso group this group is actually iso group so it is isopentane okay this we all we call it as neopentane neopentane when the second last carbon has two methyl group attach so it is neo neopentane obviously if you see the number of carbon atom in the chain here it is 3 here it is 4 here it is 5 so all these are chain isomers of each other another example of chain isomers you see this one is also chain isomers of each other copied okay so key point here is which one sitesh oh yeah i missed one thing we have a double bond here actually and you can place double bond here also one second what 2 3 4 5 not here you can place it here not fine Key point in this particular thing is what 
that the size of parent chain must be different. That is a key point here, write down. Size of parent chain. Size means number of carbon atom, basically. Must be different. And same molecular formula that we have already, right? No, if you do not write here double bond, then the parent chain is ring only, no? So we have a double bond here. So for this molecule, the parent chain is this, not the ring. Here we have double bond. So this is the parent chain. Size is different. Got it, Anusha? Yeah. You can also revise nomenclature. Okay, we have done it already. You can also revise it. Uh, that helps you. Okay, quick revision is required. Okay, so here we have the size of parent chain is different. The second type of uh, structural isomerism is position isomerism, positional. Okay, here what happens? Same molecular formula, obviously we have. Along with that, the other condition is, it is due to, write down, it is due to the different position different position occupied by by an atom groups an atom group or any functional group any functional group, right? Double bond and triple bond also you can consider under functional group, right? For example, you see, CH3, CH2, CH double bond, CH2. CH3, CH double bond, CH, single bond, CH3. So these two are positional isomers because the position of double bond is at first carbon. Here it is at second carbon, okay? Second one is CH3, CH2, CH2, NO2, and CH3, CH, CH3, NO2, right? Position is different, okay? Condition here is what? The size of parent chain must be same. Parent chain must be same. Another point also you must write down. Functional group like Functional group like aldehyde, carboxylic acid, its derivative also we can consider. Derivative, cyanides, do not exhibit positional isomerism. Why can you tell me?
कॉपीड Done, guys. Okay, so these functional group does not show positional isomerism because we, if you remember, while nomenclature, while no writing down the name of these functional group, we always start the numbering from the carbon atom of this functional group. Yes or no? remember that first position is always given to the carbon atom of the functional group correct hence the position is fixed that is first for all these functional group hence they do not show positional isomerism okay third one we have functional isomerism this one we have same molecular formula but different functional group write down in short i'll write down here same molecular formula but different functional group okay like the first example i have given you CH3 OCS3 ether and alcohol CS3 CH2 OH these two are functional isomers aldehyde CH3 C double bond O CS3 and CH3 CH2 C double bond OH, aldehyde and ketone are functional isomers. Okay. Methyl cyanide, CS3CN and CS3NC. It is isocyanide, this is cyanide, functional isomers. Okay. Uh, if you take this example, it is aliphatic alcohol, CS2OH, but if OH is directly attached to the ring, it is aromatic alcohol. It is a derivative of phenol. This is also functional isomers. Okay, copy this down. What previous condition? Aro? Acha, that functional group. Wala. Wait, I'll tell you. It was simple. If you write down this molecule, CS3, COOH, what is the name of this compound? One, two, ethanoic acid. Okay. If you write down this CS3, C double bond OH, one, two, ethanol. If you write down this CS3, CHCS3, C double bond O, OH. What is the name of this compound? 1, 2, 3, 2 methyl propanoic acid. So you see, in all these examples, what we are doing, we are always giving first position to the 
कार्बन एटम ऑफ द फंक्शनल ग्रुप राइट मीन्स ऑलवेज फर्स्ट पोजिशन इज गिवेन टू दिस हेन्स अदर पोजिशन और अदर नंबर हियर इज नॉट पॉसिबल दैट इज द रूल ऑफ नॉमिन क्लियर हेन्स द नंबर ऑफ दिस कार्बन एटम इज ऑलवेज वन इट कैन नॉट बी एनीथिंग अदर देन वन राइट हेन्स इट वोट शो पोजिशनल आइसोमेरिज If the position is different, then only positional, no. No, you need to revise um, nomenclature for that. We are going by the rules of nomenclature. Like for OH, it is not true. If you have CH three, CH three CH two CH two OH. One, two, three. Sorry, one, two, three. Propanol, it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So functional isomerism is this different, a functional group present. The next one is. write down the next one is okay so we have done this automatism we'll do in last okay next write down we have ring chain isomerism the fourth one so in this as the name suggest one compound is a cyclic ring and other one is a cyclic compound and other one is a cyclic compound write down it is due to it is due to the different modes different modes of linking of carbon atoms in this isomers contains isomers contains either open chain or ring structure open chain or ring structure we can also write down for isomers the degree of unsaturation should be equal okay like for example if you have a molecule ch3 ch double bond ch2 what is the degree of unsaturation for this molecule degree of unsaturation for this molecule one more example i'll show you ch3 ch2 ch double bond ch2 and cyclobutane
right? And we can also draw one more like this, methyl cyclopropane. All these are ring chain isomers. Yes, degree of unsaturation is one. One note, all of you write down. If the ring chain isomerism is not mentioned then we consider this under this under functional isomerism. Preferably we take ring chain. If ring chain is not mentioned, then functional. Done. Okay, next. The fifth one is metamerism. Metamerism is possible with polyvalent functional group. with polyvalent functional group. Polyvalent functional group means like we have ketone examples right down. We can have ketone polyvalent functional group, two valency we have, ether, two valency we have, thioether, two valency we have, amines, Right? This kind of isomerism we define, write down, it is due to it is due to the presence of presence of different alkyl group presence of different alkyl group attached to attached to the same polyvalent functional group okay uh, i'll write down this as this way nh i'll write down here
like this. Okay. See this example. We have CH3, CH2O, CH2, CS3. Methyl, ethyl and ethyl both side we have. If I write down this, one side I'll write down methyl and other side will write down propyl. Different alkyl group attached to both sides of the polyvalent functional group. So these two are metamers. Okay. Similarly, if you write down CH3, CH2, C double bond O, CH2, CH3, and CH3, C double bond O, CH2, CH2, CH3, these two are also metamers of each other. Okay. Remember, it is not positional isomers. Okay, it is always metamers when it is a polyvalent functional group. Okay, so preferably we'll write metamers. If metamerism is not mentioned, then we can think of positional. So first metamerism and then positional. Okay. Now in this, we have one more left that is totemerism. Totemerism will do it later. Okay. Not now. We'll do it later. After finishing the portion, we'll start a, a reaction a mechanism and then we'll, in that one, we'll do a totemerism there. Okay. So these are the five types of structural isomerism we had discussed. Okay. After this, we need to understand The stereoisomerism. 